One of my favorite troll physics questions, or physics brain teasers if you prefer, asks a deceptively simple question. If you are in a car traveling at the speed of light, what happens when you turn your headlights on? Now, of course, we could merely take the easy way out and assert the fact that objects with mass can never attain light speed. We may be able to approach it closely given the right equipment, but we will never reach 299,792,458 meters per second, or C, the speed of light in a vacuum. However, that's way too easy, so let's suppose for the sake of a more fun argument that we actually can attain speeds that are 99.9 .9 something percent the speed of light, an appreciable amount for our car or our ship, and find out what happens in that case. In this particular thought experiment, often referred to in scientific circles as a Gedanken experiment, the answer appears to be intuitive. One would generally assume that if there was an observer on Earth watching our ship zip through the solar system, then when we flick the switch to enable our lights, they would observe the beam traveling at two times the speed of light. After all, if we were driving our car ship through a vacuum at 150 miles per hour, and we threw a fastball in the same direction at 90 miles per hour, then an outside observer should clock the ball moving at 240 miles per hour. That logically follows from the addition of the two velocities, so if we apply that to our ship moving near the speed of light, then we should have C plus C. Well, not exactly. You see, in our fastball example, we are using a more simplified and intuitive model that, of course, works in those specific situations, and it's known as Newtonian mechanics. It is based off the principles that Sir Isaac Newton laid out so many years ago. Within that description, speeds add together whenever they are going in the same trajectory. An object traveling in the X direction, like our car, which throws off another object in the same direction, like the ball, would then result in a longer velocity vector, indicating a greater speed. That method of understanding works perfectly well when we are referring to low-speed macroscopic interactions However, later on, Albert Einstein found that this description was not sufficient whenever speeds increased to appreciable fractions of our friend C. Newtonian mechanics breaks down under large gravitational fields, or high velocities. So, we must switch to special relativity when we want to examine what would occur within those cases. Relative to the car's movement, we would be the stationary observer. In fact, in a universe devoid of all landmarks, we wouldn't be able to tell if we were in motion or if we were completely stationary. This is obviously not too much different then the way that we exist on this Earth, we don't particularly notice the movement of the planet that we are upon. When we finally turn our lights on, nothing special would happen. In fact, it would be the same as if we were driving through a really dark night with our high beams on. They would function just fine and when we measured their speed, we would find that the photons within the beam are moving at the speed of light. So if everything works like normal and there's no cause for concern, 
what would occur for our friend that's observing back on Earth? Well, for one thing, when they measured our ship, it would be much shorter than we would normally consider. Its length would have contracted. Additionally, their timepieces would be moving much faster than the ones that we would have on our ship. Based on their observations of distance and time, they would find that our headlights are still moving at the speed of light. However, while we may see that our LEDs are showing the characteristic whitish, bluish glow, they wouldn't see a thing unless they were a special case because our headlights would have been blue shifted into the ultraviolet range and beyond. They would no longer be able to perceive that we had even changed anything by turning our lights on. While both observers will agree that the speed of light is the same, we would be able to check ourselves in the mirror on the ship. However, our friends on Earth would see nothing but darkness. That is the beauty of the universe and how special relativity can help us understand a question that appears to have a common sense answer, yet turns out to be non-intuitive. As always, if you have any questions about this video or any of my other ones, feel free to contact me anywhere I am on the internet. Your feedback is always valuable to me, and I always enjoy seeing what thoughts and feelings these videos have sparked within you. It means the world to me. If you'd like to continue helping me make videos like this and really just get through life in general, please check out my Patreon. There are a lot of different perks, mainly handmade tie-dye items. If you can't do that though, I know often I can't do that for the creators that I love, but you can always help me out by sharing the page and getting it out to other people that might be interested. Either way, I want you to know that you are a blessing to me, and I hope that you stay safe. Please know that you are incredible, and until next time, my witchlings, bye.